Isaiah chapter number 17, 17th book of the Bible is Esther. As I said, there are 66 books in the Bible, there are 66 chapters of Isaiah. And I have been told if you do a study of the chapters in the book, you will find a reference. Now, I've never done that study. I'm giving you the opportunity to study the word and see if be so. The burden of Damascus, right? We've done two chapters of the burden of Moab, Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap, destruction. And I said my own little definition of burden is when you will go against God and his people. That's a destruction. That's not the way of life. That is a burden. So Damascus is going against God, and they end up a heap. The cities of Aurora are forsaken, left, gone. They shall be for flocks, goats, sheep, which shall lie down, and none shall make them afraid. So. The people move out, the animals move in. And it's going to be harder for you to, let's make Aurora our city again. When you got lions and snakes and venomous snakes and uh, rats have decayed the wood and insects have decayed, it's hard to get it back. It's an utter destruction by the ailments of weather and of insects, of animals. You leave a house long enough, it will decay. It will fall apart by insects and by weather alone. The fortress also shall cease from Ephraim. Fortress is a, is a building built, a fort for defense. And the kingdom from Damascus and the raiment of Syria. They shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. There will be no more kingdoms, no more kings in Damascus. Um, going against God, it's, it's destruction. Everything that goes against God is destruction. You end up in hell with nothing but misery and torment and torture. Even if you're a Christian and you don't do what God tells you to do, you get to walk the street of gold in, in New Jerusalem. But when you defy God, it's a loss. In And in that day it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob, Israel, shall be made thin. Uh-oh. And the leanness of his flesh shall... The lean, the, and the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. So, Jacob is going to be high and mighty, and he's going to be brought down low. And it shall be as when the harvestman gathers the corn, this is like, and reapeth the ears with his arm. That's not much. And it shall be as he that gathereth ears in the valley of Rephidim. And study Rephidim and you'll get the, the meaning here. But it's not much. And we move on to verse 6. Yet gleaning grapes shall be left in it. As the shaking of an olive tree. Two or three berries in the top of the uppermost bough. So high you couldn't reach it. They're, they're left over. So here you have a tree with Jacob as an olive tree. It's full of, of olive berries. It's time to pick. It's Look at it. Look at all the berries on that tree. Look at all the excellency of Jacob. And when you're all done with the tree and you look, there's a couple berries up there. Oh, oh well. Leave them up there. Out of a whole tree, there's only a couple berries left. And 
That's what the likeness of Jacob will be. It's fat, full, gray. And in the end, only just a few berries. Here is his great big harvest of corn. How much is it? Just enough to fill a guy's arms. It's not much. Four or five in the outmost fruitful branches. Therefore, saith the Lord God of Israel. <coughs> Revelation chapter 14, verses 15 to 20. There's not going to be many Jews left. And there's a ratio there of how many olive berries grow on a tree, and you only got four or five left. That's not much. At that day shall a man look to his maker, capital M, Micah 7 7. I'm trying to find this other note here. There's a note here, but I don't have where it goes to. It would be the Lord Jesus Christ, the maker. In the beginning was the word, and the word, John 1 1. And it's not evolution. There was a maker. The Bible says in Genesis 2 that God took mud or dirt and made man and breathed life into him. And his eyes, man, shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel. Look at that. No, listen, you got churches all around here. It's not respect to the Holy One of Israel. Most of the churches around here are religion, and religion's man-made, worshiping Satan. And he shall not look to the altar. Now, the subject here is man, the work of his hands, the altars, the images, the idols, statues. Neither shall neither shall respect that which his fingers have made, man-made. Either the groves, uh-oh, the groves are wrong. Or the images. Oh, pictures. It's coming a time when, when the picture you see of Jesus, the, the, the Gentile Jesus, they're not going to regard it. The Last Supper, they're not going to regard it. The groves, they're not going to regard them. The statues in the groves, they're not going to regard them at one time. They will not be regarded. They'll be vain. They're not vain today. In that day shall his strong city, man, be as a forsaken bough. You leave a tree alone. Again, bugs, insects, animals, weather will get the best of the tree. You take a tree as like an apple tree. If you don't take care of that apple tree you don't do the maintenance on that apple tree that apple tree needs to be cut it needs to be uh, uh, pruned you won't get apples now I forget what it was I was told it was, it, apples will come on the old branches not the new branches or, some, or vice versa I forget what I was told but that apple tree has to have work done to it there are trees that have to have work done to it. If not, it's not going to be fruitful. Even the Bible speaks of as far as Christians. God has to cut off parts of us that are not good or rotten. He needs to bind up that which is broken. Forsaken bow is not the way a tree should be. And an uppermost branch which they left because of the children of Israel and there shall there shall be desolation so here we see trees are likened to men study the Bible Jesus opened the eye of a blind man he goes what do you see he said I see men as trees walking in Judges there's a parable about the trees and it's about a king and I believe it's also about Abimelech We are to produce fruit. And listen, 
For a Christian, fruit is not going out winning souls. Fruit for a Christian is you're living proper. You're providing for your family. You're providing for people around you. You are doing the deeds of a good tree that God expects you to be. Yes, it involves soul winning. But that's only one part of the fruit. There are many fruit of a Christian life. Then you add to that the fruit of the Spirit. And there are some Christians that, you know what, you look at the tree and it's dead. It's not doing nothing. And that's what Israel is like today. They're dead. They're not doing nothing for God. Oh, they got pretty leaves. They look like they're dead, but they're not. God is not pleased with them. Jesus walked up to a tree and all he saw was leaves and he cursed it. Jesus expects us to be fruit trees, producing fruit. And that's what is called in the grocery store, produce. And most of that produce comes from trees. I can, I can assume that if a guy has a banana plantation and he's got one tree there that doesn't produce bananas at all. Jesus said in a parable, cut that thing down. The guy said, well, wait, let me dung it. Let me give it a little fertilizer. Let me give it a little attention. Chapter 17. And if not, then I'll cut it down. See, a tree needs an attention. We need an attention by God, the maker. That's what God put Adam in the garden, to dress the garden, to take care of it. Because thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation, and hast not been mindful of the rock of thy strength, Oh, you can forget God. Therefore shalt thou, pl therefore shalt thou plant pleasant plants, and shalt set it with strange slips. And that's plant cuttings. And Jesus speaks. Uh, no, Paul speaks about being grafted in wild plants being grafted into the vine. We're the wild plants. We're the Gentiles. We're the oddball. We're the ones that Peter and Jonah didn't want to go visit. They rejected Jesus Christ. God cut them off as a nation, as a group of people, as individuals. They can come into the plant. As individuals, Gentiles can come in and be grafted in and produce the grapes, the fruit that God wants. Listen, there was a Gentile woman who came up to Jesus and get that dead dog away from me. In that in the day shalt thou make thy plant to grow, and in the morning shalt thou make thy seed to flourish. But the harvest shall be a heap in a day of grief and of desperate sorrow. You can get all the miracle grow you want. But harvest at the great white throne judgment when the reapers have gone out and, and, and reaped all the tares be gnashing the teeth be tears as the unprofitable plants are cast into fire Woe to the multitude of many people, which make a noise like the noise of the seas, and to the rushing of nations, that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty water. So when it speaks about Babylon, that great whore, what are the waters? People, nations, tongues. You ever heard the clap and the cheering of a football stadium or a baseball game? You ever hear it on, on a cassette or CD tape? It sounds like water. 
It sounds like many waters. A group of people. Here's a unity of people getting together and it's not for God. It's likened to a flood. The nation shall rush like the rushing of many waters. A flood. Now here's a kicker. But God shall rebuke them. We're getting all together. And God says, you're not doing it right. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. And they shall flee far off from God. Doesn't this sound like the Tower of Babel? They shall flee far off and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind. Just blown away. And like a rolling thing, and that would be a tumbleweed. What's a tumbleweed? It's a plant of no value. It's dead. It's dry. It just goes bump, 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 and by. You don't stop it. You don't pick it. You don't do nothing with it. You just let it go. Before the whirlwind, Daniel 2. Imagine a bunch of tumbleweeds in a whirlwind. All they're going to do is make a mess. And behold, at eventide, trouble. And before the morning, he is not. He is not what? What did the 11 brothers tell their father about Joseph? And he's not. Not what? What did they tell about Simeon when he was left in jail? And he's not. He's not what? There's no answer. And if you take he is not with, with Joseph and with Simeon, they didn't die. Even though they told Jacob, oh, he's dead, he's eaten by animals, but in reality, we don't know what happened to him. Simeon, he wasn't dead, he was just, we don't know what happened to him. And he's not. You don't ever want your life to be in it's not. Whatever happens. If you got, you know, a parent or loved ones, somebody in your, that you care about and you don't know. And sometimes, you know, when you pray to the Lord, Lord, I don't know if that person's saved. And all you can do is cry out their name. Like, Lord, I don't know. Here's their name, Lord. And he's not. I don't know. What? You know, Lord. This is the portion of them that spoil us. And a lot of them that rob us, Israel. Again, if you take it to the millennium, if you take it to, to Nebuchadnezzar, they were robbed, they were stolen from, they were broken down. The city was destroyed. Rome came in, took them over. Built the temple, or refurnished the, ter the temple. With Roman hands. Titus came in 70 AD and destroyed it all. Adolf Hitler came in and destroyed it all. Very few got, <coughs> got out. But there's always been a raiment of the Jews. To show us that in the future there's going to be a raiment. It's going to be that one part of Israel, one part of Jews that are going to survive only by the will and act of God. We read about Moab last night. God has to dry up, famineize, if that's a word, to give a drought, to kill the population of Moab so the Jews can go to sail the beach room. If God doesn't get rid of some of Moab, the Jews would not make it. Sometimes death is an aid to God for his people. Because there are people out there who do not want the people of God. And they could have a free license if they could have all they want, they would get rid of you and your Bible and your church. 
Now that's what the part of the Constitution of America right now you know, is gone. It is gone. But that is what's protecting the Bible believing church right now. And if that document were to be uh, canceled, destroyed, unheeded to, the very first thing would be that the Bible believing church, the Bible, and the Christian, by religion, and there'll be a lot of different groups in that religion. They will come after the Christians, the Bible, and the, that church and destroy it. And if you don't believe it, you have not read Fox's Book of Martyrs. You have not read the, the Book of Acts. You have not read the writings of Paul. And you have not studied the life of Paul himself. He wasn't put in jail because he was a criminal. James didn't lose his head because he, he was a, a, a tyrant of the government. You have not looked around you at what these religionists are doing to Christian churches. Never mind what the newspaper tells you. You listen to a Bible-believing missionary and you hear his stories. Not for money and not to sell something, but just for the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ and for the want of prayer. The world is against the Christian. The world is against the Jew. And God will make a way. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Plain and simple. 